Hi, this is Tam Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire and we're doing part two of what we began yesterday, feminine hygiene in a wilderness setting. Dave Canterbury of Wilderness Outfitters did an awesome video on field sanitation. Actually, if you haven't watched it, you should probably stop watching this YouTube and go over and watch that one first. Sanitation is very important when you're living in the great outdoors. I shared a little yesterday on the usage of the yucca root as a soap substitute and we shared two different products for a woman to use during her regular monthly cycle, but much was left out in that short introduction. So without further ado, let's keep on learning this together. Keeping clean and healthy in the bushes really isn't as difficult as people think. Once you start changing your diet and eating wild edibles, eating off the land, you'll notice that those odors that once pest you won't be near as present in your body because you've purged those toxins out of your body. Living healthy really has its benefits. Even your hair will stop getting as oily as you're used to when using the commercial shampoos. I need to also address something that could be uncomfortable to many and it's something that all women come to face to face in long-term wilderness living. One thing every woman is going to come face to face with is that the practice of cleanliness is going to be extremely important during your monthly cycle, but at all times as well. Most women, many women, will have daughters they'll need to teach things to, small babies that'll need to be diapered. In scripture we read that during the time of a woman's menstruation she was considered unclean and I just wanted to talk about that briefly. The word we have in our scriptures is unclean and the Hebrew word for that would be tamay. Now you need to understand when you're studying out Hebrew you'll come across words to do with clean and unclean like tamay or tahor. These things, these words are not to give somebody the impression that Scripture is talking about good versus evil. The words tamay and tahor really have to do with being pure, whether you're ritually pure or ritually impure. In case that we're talking about an impure subject, any bloody discharge in the medical field would be called a biohazard. So if they place such an importance on it in the medical field, then obviously it's an, an important thing that we all need to take note of. Uh, blood can be an infectious carrier and that would make it even doubly more important to practice cleanliness. You wouldn't, for example, want to dispose carelessly of your feminine napkins. You don't want to bury them. You don't want to leave them laying around. What will happen is, in, on top of it being an infectious item, you would draw predators into your camp, wild animals, and I'm sure you're not desiring to bring in unwanted predators. Part of cleanliness when you're bringing in your own sanitary napkins, it would be wise to wash them in cold water with whatever soap you have available, whether it's your yucca soap or whatever you've brought in or managed to discover to use as soap. And then you need to take them and boil them, and I'll show you how to do that in a few minutes. Um, one of the viewers, LOC, thanks a lot, sent me a few links to do with sphagnum moss. And I'll be sharing those links with you. It's very interesting to study up on this moss. And I'll be working with diligence to try to see if I can find it in this area and be able to share more with you about it. It's so important that all women are prepared in the case of survival. So I urge all you women to consider what you would use, what you would bring with you in your bug out bag. You can bring your own sanitary napkins or as we shared yesterday, the Keepa by Diva. It's up to you what you choose, but it would be wise to be prepared in advance. Now, as I continue to study up yesterday on homemade sanitary napkins, I discovered that our native brothers and sisters even used things like sheepskin and they would cut it in the shape of a diaper and just simply knot it on either side of their body and the skin 
that one would tan, that side stayed on the outside and stopped any flow from going through and they would just change it as needed. They would also make their own little bags out of cheesecloth or whatever fabric they had and stuff it with the fluff from cattail. Now I got a cattail the day my hubby did his video on naked, almost naked, into the wilderness dealing with cattail. And this one's not as ripe, I guess is the word, as I would have liked it to be, but to show you when you break in normally, this one's pretty wet, it's been lying out here in the rain, normally this would puff up with white fluffy seeds that would, this one is sort of staying compact in my hands, but when you have the ripe ones, trust me, you'll get a big ball as though of cotton fluff coming out of here and you have to keep it contained or the wind will carry it away from you. So this is something, the inside of these is something that would be used to stuff of inside of a homemade bag and used to absorb. Now back to the homemade napkins. I was sharing with you yesterday using this hospital blanket and you see I can, I've been hacking into it to sample this out. I, I used a dark thread as you can see to give you an idea of what I did, I, when I cut the material, I cut the inside smaller so that I was able to take this waterproof wrap, put it over and stitch it in place. That's what you see here. Now, when you see something like this, you may wonder, well, how do you stop this from slipping? Well, either you make it long, and as I studied, it said women would use a leather belt around their waist and simply tuck it in front and back or I made another one and all you re really do is you take the napkin that you're comfortable with you lay it onto this fabric trace it out and cut out your shape and you can put velcro or snap and simply attach that into your panty so it's just another way of making a homemade sanitary napkin now, you may be wondering how you're going to hang out your laundry while you're out there. How will you hang up your sanitary napkin? So I went into the woods and I cut me a little, just a little stick. I made a slit on this side. I made a slit on that side and went again a second time in with my knife and took out a piece so that, watch, I squeeze here, this side opens, either side. It's very, very simple, very, very primitive but it works. We'll show you in a minute. Now I'm going to show you after you've washed out to your pad to show you what I've made will be doable. We'll drop it into the water and we'll let this boil. Of course it'd be wise not to use your cooking can for this. Make sure you have your own little cleaning can and we'll be right back with you showing you what to do once this comes back to a boil. Now as you can see after it's come to a boil puffed all out, the layers all separated, which is a good thing because it helps get the boiling water into all the layers to get all the bacteria out. And then we just fish it out and we'll go and hang it up on a tree. All right, now we've washed it off. We're going to put the white side to the sun. That helps bleaching it and keeping it clean and using our handy dandy clothes pig, hang it up on the tree and let it dry. Thanks so much for your views and your comments. I know this isn't a most popular topic to talk about, but it's one that's needed. And thank you to all of you who have written me private emails and as well as the comments and ratings on the videos. Really appreciate your support. I'm Tam Wendell with Bushcraft on Fire, thanking you and hoping to see you soon on another video.